<laughs> Don't be nervous. This is this will be fun. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I'm gonna get started, and um, why don't we start with how did you get your start in music? Um, I started in music when I was really, really little. My dad, he he worked as a praise and worship leader, and so we've all kind of always been in music and ministry. Um, <laughs> my brothers would hate if I said this, but we used to have a little a group in our garage, and we would just jam out to, <laughs> I, think, I think the popular band was like Immature. I don't know if you remember Immature, but that was who was popular at the time, and <laughs> we used to just rock out. So I've been doing it since then, and then um, I attended Full Cell, and I started touring just a month after graduation. So, you know, it's just it's always wow. been a part of my life. That's awesome. So what would you say your major influences are, other musicians? Um, I'm an old school girl. So I grew up on the Delphonics, the Commodores, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Um, probably my all-time favorite is uh, Stevie Wonder. I just love his lyrical style and kind of how he paints a picture with his words. Um, but more related to my genre, I'm really inspired and influenced by David and Nicole Binion, uh, William McDowell, Dietrich Haddon. Those are some of my all-time faves. Very cool. Um, what is your favorite venue to play? Um, most of the venues that I've played were when I was traveling as part of a, a group, mm -hmm. um, and I have... I have to say that my favorite was uh, we did Madison Square Garden. We were wow. there for uh, the worship of His Majesty. Yeah, yeah, it was it was awesome. We were there with C.C. Winans, Alvin Slaughter, and um, it was Pastor Elsie Obed with Worship His Ma Majesty. And um, so that's one of my favorite because there's so much history and culture, and you get to see yeah. everybody's signature on the wall backstage. So, so that's that's one of my favorite. And then. Um, when we were in India, we got to play on the palace grounds, and it was just oh, hundreds cool. of thousands of people. And I've I've never seen that many people to come, <laughs> to, you know, to worship. So, so it was cool. Those are those would be my faves. That's really cool. So, how do you compose music? So, walk us through the process. Are you in a Starbucks? Are you at home? Does it change? <laughs> um, what does that look like? I, I wish it was. A lot more glamorous than it is. Um, usually, I'm in the car with my son, and my producers will tell you when I when I send them my references, he's always in the background, kind of you know trying to steal the the spotlight, trying to outdo me. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But normally, I'm I'm either waiting for my husband, trying to pick him up, or I get a melody first, mm -hmm. and I'll. I'll kind of put like temporary lyrics to that to help me remember the melody. Um, and then I just kind of try to feel w how do I want the melody to build? Am I hearing any breaks in there? What, what do I want the bass line to sound like? And um, when I kind of get the general composition of what the emotion I'm trying to evoke, mm -hmm. then I'll go back and put the actual lyrics to it. Very cool. So I know you have a connection to Sacramento, but could you explain to uh, people that are going on shows in SAC maybe what that connection is? Oh man, Sacramento is home. It's, uh, I was born in the Bay Area, but from fifth grade through graduation, I lived and grew up there, and it's home, you know. I, I love it. I still have a lot of family and friends. All my God kids are there, so it's definitely close to my heart. Very cool. So what is the favorite concert you've ever been to? Well, the only concert that I've ever been to, actually, was a, a grade school talent show. Um, <laughs> I know, I'm so lame, I know. Um, the only concert I've ever been to that I, I wasn't actually a part of, you know, is sure. was in, Nothing lame in about elementary that. school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And my brother, actually, he, my brother Jason, he was like the hot thing Amazing. at the school. And and um, he sang, do you remember that song, I Believe I Can Fly by R. Kelly? <laughs> Who doesn't know that song? Yeah. <laughs> this is another story that he's going to hate that I'm telling, okay? But, um, 
but he sang it and he just killed it and the audience went crazy and I remember I was I thought you know what I don't want him to get all that attention like this is what I want to do so <laughs> kind of I decided I want to be a singer too like he's getting too much of the spotlight so <laughs> that's funny um, well so my next question had to do with concerts but you you answered that uh, <laughs> partly but um, are there any concerts you wish you would have been able to go to but couldn't? Um, um, I'd love to be able to go to an Indiari concert. Um, mm -hmm. I love her music. Um, you know, anything Stevie, I'd love to be there. Um, but I just, I don't know. I, I, there's so many great artists out there. I think just to go to a concert would be a, a huge step up for me. So <laughs> you're funny. Um. What uh, what what are you doing now in music? Why don't we, why don't we well, talk about that? Yeah, we uh, we just released the single "My Desire." Mm -hmm. um, we released that Very September second. Oh, thank you. And um, yeah, we've had an awesome response. I I really have been kind of floored by the response we've been getting, and so um, <clears throat> that's what we're pushing right now. And um, we're doing a music video for that, and there's a documentary that's following me as I go through some of these health challenges and um, so that's the main thing that we're focusing on right now. Awesome and what, well you sort of answered this, but what's next for you in your musical career? What do you see as sort of your next step? Um, you know I'm, I'm not really sure what the next step is going to be outside of releasing the, the, the next single which um, I'm still trying to decide on and uh, just getting everything ready for the album. Prayerfully, the album will be done in 2014. Um, mm -hmm. So right now we're just building up. This is my first time that I'm kind of releasing music into um, the market where it's not a collaboration. And oh, whenever cool. I've done collaborations in the past, it's been kind of hip-hop or urban contemporary gospel related. But my heart is truly in praise and worship, so I'm just slowly introducing people to the real Danielle, and, and the feedback has been amazing, so I'm, I've been really blessed. That's awesome. Um, what does music mean for you? What do you get out of performing? I think that, for me, music is just a place to be vulnerable, a place to be transparent, um, a place that you can just come and put all your feelings, all your thoughts out, and really be honest, and no matter what that looks like, no matter what that story says, there's always an audience for it that will embrace it and will accept it and love you for it. So to me, it's been almost like a diary, just a sounding board for whatever I'm going through at that time. And then as far as performing, what do I get out of it? I get anxiety out of it is what I get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I think, I think it's awesome to, to come from being in the car with my son and, and singing, you know, the little two-minute line to mm. going on stage and seeing everybody worshiping to, to a, a song that God has given you. I think that that is the greatest benefit is just being able to see the process of God giving you something small and seeing it through to the end. That's awesome. So Christianity plays a large role in your music. What yeah. advice would you give other artists in, in that genre of music? The advice that I would give is if, the, if their goal is to be effective in ministry, which is different from being successful as an artist, a Christian mm -hmm. artist, but if the goal is to be effective in ministry, then my advice would just to be sincere in your relationship, in your approach to God. Um, make sure that you're always carving out time to really have a personal um, time of worship with God because there's there's an anointing that comes when you spend time in the presence of God and that anointing is what you take with you on the platform and it's that anointing that gives you power when you minister. So I think that um, especially when you're starting out there's always something to do. But if mm. your goal is to be effective in ministry and not just 
hit the markers on what it what successful looks like um, you've got to maintain that sincere relationship and in really a that sincere time of worship with God Well, I think we touched on this a little bit, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll do the question anyways because I think you could probably elaborate some. So what are some of the unique challenges you face trying to make it in the Christian music genre? Um, to follow up on that, are there any differences in obtaining success like you have uh, in your genre that may not be faced by artists that aren't in the Christian genre? Um. For me, I've been really, really blessed um, with the relationships that my parents had and the relationships that I've developed, you know, over the years. Um, so when I decided that I wanted to seriously pursue um, singing and being in the gospel industry, um, I was kind of met with open arms and people really embraced me. So I've been really blessed in that regard. I think my biggest challenge has just been building relationships with churches. I think that because of my age, sometimes there's a question or, or a hesitancy as to whether there's going to be a maturity that, that comes along with me and whether or not um, I'm going to be able to really flow in, um, in the, the service and really bring in usher in the presence of God. So I think that's been the biggest challenge that I face is just overcoming that age barrier. Um, mm -hmm. As far as if there's differences, you know, I've, I've never been a secular artist, so I don't know what right. those challenges entail. Sure. Um, but I think that probably a huge difference is just how we define success. Um, you know, as a, as, a, as a Christian, not even just a Christian artist, but as a Christian myself, I have a, a specific standard that I live by. And there's a lot of things that appear smart moves moves in the natural there's a lot of things that appear like this is going to be a great move for pushing my career ahead but if I don't have a piece about it or if I've prayed and God has you know spoken and said no then I kind I have to really yield that ambition and to be to follow the Holy Spirit and follow the leading of God and I, I I would imagine that that is an extra challenge that someone in the secular industry wouldn't have to face. Right. So harder question. I read on your bio that you battled uh, an illness in 2011. Um, okay, if you don't want to touch on that, but if there's anything you'd like to share about that experience, mm -hmm. um, I'd love to hear more if you're willing to share. Yeah, yeah. Um, 2010, I was diagnosed with uh, a rare blood disease, and um, I I dealt with that through the end of 2011, through well through the fall of 2011, and um, even still to this day, there's a lot of physical things that I'm still working through and trying to come back from from that. So um, it's definitely a challenge. I, as I was sharing, it's I think that the physical attacks is all part of just being someone who's trying to further the kingdom and whenever you're doing that there's always going to be some level of opposition and some level of distraction so I think for me this is just mine and um, just, to, just to tie it back to the single my song has really been an inspiration to me you know even though I wrote it years and years ago it's really inspired me just in the last few years to really not allow my circumstances to cloud um, my the sincerity that I approach God with and my um, lifestyle of worship and to just always choose to make him my passion and always choose to worship him so um, you know we just we just take it day by day and um, like we're going like I was telling you we're going into the doctor next week and you know whatever happens is gonna happen I know that I'll get through it I just have to maintain my attitude of worship as I do it because I think that's where the real lesson comes from. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, you know, a lot yeah. of people wouldn't be willing to do that, so appreciate that. Yeah, no um, so uh, 
well, people probably don't know this, but we went to high school together, so it's it's been a while. <laughs> um, and yes, I know that has. you now are a mom and married. Congratulations on both those things. Yes. Thank you, um, thank you. <laughs> can you tell me about the unique experience of being a professional musician and also a mom and also a wife? Ah, well, it's a, <laughs> it's a juggling right. act. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a juggling act. I, I am now ready to audition for Cirque du Soleil because I have definitely <laughs> got my acrobatics down. No, but um, I'm really lucky. My husband's in music. He works um, in the behind the scenes the management side, so he really understands uh, the work that goes into it and the hours, the, you know, the off hours. Um, my son does not. <laughs> and sometimes, sometimes it takes me like four hours just to respond to an email, you know, but, but I'm learning to balance it. And um, the cool thing about being in ministry and being in music with, with the kid is they get to see you live it out and model it out in front of them. So um, my son was with me when I recorded my single. He was with me in the studio and he knows the words and like I said, he, he's always trying to outdo me when we sing. So <laughs> it, it's cool, you know, there, it's hard, but it's definitely a huge payoff, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, it sounds like the family's gonna be uh, maybe having some more musical uh, pursuits in their in their future. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so your single dropped in early September. Can you tell us a little bit more about that song and what inspired you in writing and recording that song? Yeah, yeah. I I thought about this question because I always get asked this question and I never I never know the answer. Um, I wrote the song like seven years ago. Okay. But for you, for you, I thought about it, and <laughs> thank you. I wrote, <laughs> I wrote the, I wrote the bridge of the song first, mm -hmm. and I wrote it in an elevator in Milan when we were we were on a did a tour in Milan. Um, so I, I, as far as the inspiration, it, it must have been some. Really good elevator music <laughs> because that's where I wrote it. Um, but like I said, the song has really, God will have me walk through something in my life and the lyrics of that song will then become um, real to me. And so it's just really inspired me the last few years. So I hope it's a blessing to other people. Awesome. Well, I think it is. Um, have, have I read that you've also written music and worked on other projects besides your own? Can you touch on composing music and how writing music has played a role in your career? Yeah, I um, I was published as a writer a uh, few years before I was ever um, published as a as a singer or did any kind of recording, and that's kind of how I got my buzz in college. Um, people knew that I was a talented writer but mainly they knew I was really fast and so everybody was coming to me and I was I was able to to do a lot of collaborations through college um, and that led to I think one of my first placements was with Bingo on the Hog Life nominated album so I was really blessed in that regard to get to work with him and writings it's a huge passion. It's like right up there with singing. I, I don't really know which one I love best. Awesome. We're having a little bit of technical difficulties. I'm not hearing your side of it right now. Um, still there? Danielle? Oh, okay. Yeah, there's like a little... Yeah, I'm here. Okay, perfect. A little bit of a delay. Yeah, can you hear me? <laughs> I can. We're, we're back. We're back. It's working now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and 
So I'll just close out. Um, hopefully, won't we get any, get any more yeah. technical difficulties? And uh, I thank you for your time. You spent a lot of time with me, and I really appreciate that. Um, is there anyone else you'd love to see an interview with on shows in SAC? Someone you know of, or just an artist you admire? Um, well, I think because you're based in Sacramento, I would be crazy not to recommend my brother. Uh, his name is Seven. He's a, a rapper based in Sacramento, and he's got a ministry, uh, Hog Mob Ministries, and they're just doing incredible work. They're all over the world, and um, I think that he would love it, and I think you guys would be really blessed by it, so check him out. I will. Is that the same brother that I uh, play basketball with? Did he play on the team? No, no, no. Okay. No, this this brother this brother was a little preoccupied with gang activity at the time. So. Oh, no. okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a story for another day. But thank you so yeah. much for all your time, uh, and thank you for your honesty, and thank you for uh, for answering all my questions. Um, and I'll let I'll give it to you. Do you have any questions of us before we close out? No, I just want to say thank you guys so much for thinking of me. Um, it's a pleasure to, to sit down and talk to you and a treat since we know each other. And yes. um, you know, I, I, I checked out your site. You guys are doing great work. And I'm um, just excited to see where you guys go from here and to just keep in touch. We'll definitely have to do this again. Excellent. Sounds good. Well, you know where to reach me, and I'd love to talk with you again, Danielle. So thanks again, and uh, you have a great night, and uh, I appreciate it very much. You too. All right. Bye-bye.